that George Floyd protests have certainly sparked some, some tough conversations about race and identity. For very many American Latinos, it's been a wake-up call of sorts. Afro-Latinos have been living an, at times, difficult dual existence of being both black and Latino in America. Alex Perez has this story. She's a singer. I wanna know, baby, does that make me insecure? Reality show star. But I'm Latina. And rapper. She's known for embracing her Afro and blackness. But despite all her success and accomplishments, there's one battle Amara La Negra has always had to fight, defending her Afro-Latin blackness. So right. really the black inference in diaspora is, is everywhere. Uh, exactly. Having to defend yourself like that all the time, why do you think it's so hard for people I still feel there's a lot of African Americans that don't even know that there's other parts in the world where there's people like us and don't speak English, right? We're not all African Americans. We are diverse in every single possible way you can imagine. In a nation that likes to put people in a box, black, Latino, white, Asian, Amara, born Diana Danelis de los Santos to Dominican parents, says she's always having to explain herself to African Americans who have publicly questioned her blackness, like on the Breakfast Club radio show. What are you? Huh? Like race-wise. <laughs> and even to other Latinos, including some in her home state of Florida, who she says questioned why she would participate in a Miami Black Lives Matter march. And we're like, oh, why are you out there protesting? You know, you're not black. You have to pick. Are you Latina? Are you Dominican? Are you black? You kind of have to pick. And... They were, you know, saying a lot of, you know, negative things towards me. I guess that there was a part of them that didn't understand how important this is. Not just, it's, it's a humanity thing. In the wake of the George Floyd murder, as protests spread across the country, there's also a growing spotlight illuminating the diversity of blackness in America. It's a lesson educator Jennifer White says she's been teaching for years. The Spanish teacher is the only Latina and only teacher of color at the Donahoe School in Anniston, Alabama. In the rural South, she makes it a point to educate her students about Afro-Latinness. I need to be true to myself and I need to be able to make sure that I know who I am as a, as a Spanish teacher and teaching culture. I think um, as a Spanish teacher, we're very important people because, or world language teachers, because we're the ones that teach culture. We're the ones that bring up these uncomfortable conversations about race and history too, because we do history. So it's like we, we bring up these uncomfortable conversations about race, colorism. Pedro Noguera, a dean at USC who focuses on race and policy, believes America's historically poor treatment of African Americans created a massive divide among Latino immigrants, even those who are black. So when many Latin Americans come to this country, uh, there's a tendency to try to dis distance themselves from black Americans. And that's true even among people who phenotypically from Latin America are black. So you think about American baseball, someone like Big Papi, um, the great slugger from the Red Sox, who is clearly black, very dark skinned, does not identify as black, identifies as Dominican as if that were separate and somehow from being black. Adding to the complexities in America, the many countries Latino families can originate from. And so who is a Latino? So many Latinos identify more with nationality. They will say, I'm from El Salvador, I am from Panama, not that I'm Latino. Latino doesn't mean a whole lot. It only means something to second and third generation Latinos who've been in America, who understand the way race in America works, and so they will claim a Latino identity but in that identity, there's incredible diversity. In the U.S., most strictly think African-American when they hear black. But according to Pew Research, during the colonial period, about 15 times as many slaves were taken to Latin America than to the United States. Many of those families would eventually immigrate to America, bringing their blackness and Latin American traditions with them. One study found a quarter of all Latinos in the U.S. self-identify as Afro-Latino 
Latino, Afro-Caribbean, or of African descent with roots in Latin America. As protesters have filled the streets across the country recently, demanding changes to systemic problems, it's become clear those demonstrators are a diverse group. One indicator, says Noguera, of how the concept of race in America is evolving. It's not static. It's, it's rooted in politics, not biology. Once we see it that way, we understand how and why it's used. It's used to rationalize oppression. It's used to divide people. And that's what we have to reject. We have to reject racism and the ways in which it's used to keep people apart and to justify discrimination. Once we see it that way, then we can celebrate our identity, celebrate our culture, and not do it in ways that put others down. Um, and, 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 and perpetuate racial hierarchy. Rejecting racism and celebrating her Afro-Latina beauty is why Amara says she'll continue to speak up. She often turns to one of her role models growing up. The late Cuban icon and queen of salsa, Celia Cruz. I admired Celia Cruz, and I admired her to the core of me because she was the only person that looked like me. A struggle for identity that she hopes one day the future of America won't face. Because we will stand strong together. We will stand strong together. Alex Perez, ABC News, Chicago. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.